Well, good evening, ATL Rug. Um, thanks so much for giving me the opportunity to come and uh, chat with you guys a little bit about this thing I've been building. Um, a little bit about me first. Um, I am a Ruby web developer. I am currently at Big Nerd Ranch, um, which is a, a little consultancy um, in town. And uh, we do like, you know, end-to-end -end kind of custom software development stuff. Uh, most of the back end will be in like in uh, Ruby and Rails kind of work. Um, and my, my position currently I'm doing uh, sort of leading internal systems development and um, uh, yeah, so that's, that's kind of where, where I'm coming from. Uh, I've been a, been a Ruby programmer for years and years. And today I'm here to talk to you about something I'm calling passive record. Uh, it is a Ruby gem, and you can download and play with it today. Um, yeah, so uh, kind of, kind of the, the core of it is, is this idea. So it's an in-memory component, so we're not talking to a database, but uh, what passive record gives you is um, a, a kind of, a lot of the same relational semantics that active records interface would give you. Um, without having to do an end-to-end -end interaction with the database. Um, so most people usually give me a look <laughs> and ask why would you want that um, when I start uh, saying this. And so I, I think maybe like uh, one of the, the bigger context pieces here is kind of the, the shift towards things like microservices and different ways of handling service-oriented architecture where at, at least potentially, this is one of, the, one of the things that I see potentially interesting here, is you might be in a context where you're, all, all the information you need to solve the problems that users of the service are, um, are, are asking you might be available through um, APIs or it's possible you're even getting the information you need through a stream of events um, in other words, may, maybe you're in a context where you actually don't need to persist any of the information, um, but you still might want to do some relational semantic kind of things, right? So tracking objects by ID um, or, or querying objects based on, um, based on attributes or like object relational things. Um, and so, th so that's what this gives you, right? Um, we'll, we'll dig in a little bit, but the, 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 the core of it is that it kind of emulates kind of the, the highest level features of Active Records Interface, right? So things like establishing relationships between entities, um, doing queries directly on object attributes, but then sort of being able to, to dive in and, and sort of traverse object relations with those queries, so like nested queries um, and yeah, uh, and sort of as, as I was building it, ended up sort of working my way through um, kind of all of the different relational kind of paradigms that, that Rails lets you kind of express, right? Um, so passive record can handle, uh, you know, even things like self-referential and many-to-many -many relationships. And again, absolutely no database required. This is all gonna be in memory. Um, and all you have to do is include passive record in a model class, so uh, let's dive into a little bit of code. So this, this is sort of like the core, <laughs> the core idea, right? Um, so up top, all we're doing is making sure we've got the gem, we're building a model class uh, that just includes it, and now things that descend from that model have a lot of the facilities that AR offers, right? Um, so in this case, we're setting up uh, a couple models. Um, the idea is we've got a, a dog that belongs to a kid, and the kid belongs to a parent, and the parent's got many dogs through the children. Um, so, like, you know, normally to do things like a, a through relationship, at least an active record, um, you kind of have to have a database table backing it, at least to do some of the more complicated joins and things like that. Um, so, so potentially one idea here is that, okay, I just wanna, I wanna play with these models and sort of see how their interactions and their relations work uh, but I don't necessarily want to build a, a huge schema and have to do round trips to the database just to, just to test and to play. Or alternatively, you maybe 
learning relational algebra and trying to just to grok and understand kind of the concepts involved, it's, it's a facility for, for letting you play with that stuff. So uh, once we've got these, these models we talked about, um, a parent that's got kids, a kid that's got a dog, we can go ahead and create these relationships just like you would with active record, right? We've got a dot create method. Um, there's a, a dot create method that sort of knows what the, what the relationship's about. Um, so sort of these methods are sort of kind of auto-defined, right? But when you, when you say that the, the, the parent has many children. Um, similarly for the child's creation of the dog, um, you see that, that after we've uh, created the child's dog, we get a dog object back that, that has a reference back to the child ID. And then so from the dog, we can look up what that, the child that he was related to, right? Uh, and, and similarly, you can sort of find it in this more explicit fashion as well, right? Um, so for the has many through, similar to active record, we actually get back this sort of explicit relational object uh, that we can um, sort of call, you know, again, fairly kind of standard methods. I mean, part of the, part of the idea here was kind of principle of least surprise. If you're familiar <laughs> with active record, hopefully the, the gap shouldn't be too big um, and there shouldn't be too many sharp edges. Um, in fact, like most, uh, most of the test cases are actually just straight examples from the Rails docs and just kind of trying to make them work in this context. Um, so here's an example of like a nested query, kind of traversing the object relations and, and kind of digging out an inner related object through the graph. Um, and that's kind of the end of the straight code examples. We can, we can dive into the specs. They'll have a little more kind of depth. but. Um, but just maybe a quick overview of kind of the, the interface. Again, it's, it's, a, it's a limited subset of Active Records API. I would not expect 100% of Active Records to be there. It's definitely not, right? It's sort of just the core relational stuff um, as well as hooks and a couple other things we'll get into. But um, all right, so we've got model classes and then instances of the model, right? So the API is kind of divided into what's on the instance and what's on the class. Uh, instances can be updated with a hash of attributes. Um, they can be destroyed. Uh, and there's kind of serialization and, and kind of debugging things that will display like kind of a reasonable object pretty printed for you instead of like raw Ruby ID or whatever. Um, so again, most of this interface should look fairly familiar from like it, it, it should look and feel like AR, right? Um, so, you know, on a, on a new uh, a class that declares it includes passive record, you've got uh, that class.create, you've got uh, model.destroy, and, and it'll re remove a model with the ID. Um, you've got finders and sort of a more uh, kind of sophisticated than just the raw finder kind of query methodology that, that it should end up looking and feeling an awful lot like kind of active record queries. Um, Let's dive in real quick to those. So uh, the, the, the queries sort of, they, they're chainable. You can, you can stack them together like with uh, active record queries. Um, they, you know, again, accept those nested conditions and you can traverse object relations with them. Um, and if you've got sort of class methods uh, that return queries, it sort of understands those as scopes, right? And can sort of reason about and chain and, and query them. Uh, you can even like negate a query or, or join them together. Again, syntax should be kind of f familiar from a, a Rails perspective to some, to some degree. Uh, so yeah, that's kind of the core of the query API. There's like some, some arithmetic methods in here as well uh, if, if you're trying to do computations and things like that. Um, there's some kind of, there's some special behavior with the conditions a little bit here. So, uh, keep, keep in mind there's no SQL engine, right? This is all sort of done in pure Ruby, right? So um, to support things like, you know, a SQL between and a SQL in, uh, we kind of use the same semantics that a Active Record uses to, for its own query language, right? Um, so if you give Active Record um, a range, right, uh, it, it, sort of treats, it sort of translates that into some SQL that says, okay, between this thing and this thing, right? Um, and so pass, passive record queries sort of understand that 
and we'll kind of construct a, an, an equivalent query that looks for things that fall in the range. Um, similarly, for things that fall in a collection, you can use uh, an array. Um, and finally, if there's a hash, this is sort of how to do the nested queries and, and digging into related objects and so on. Um, so this is like uh, kind of a many-to-many -many relationship. You want, you want to find um, the doctor with an appointment for a given patient, and it'll kind of navigate the, the object relational graph and, and figure out which patients match. Um, we, we do have all the hooks, that, that, or at least the, these simple set of hooks. Uh, I think active records are maybe a bit richer. Um, we'll, we'll come back to prior art in a minute, but uh, let's, let's go through the relations real quick. So, kind of the, um, the, the central idea of relational algebra, right, is um, that, uh, uh, so a, a relation, right, is actually like a row in a database. It gets a little confusing thinking about it that way. The language doesn't quite match up the way we think about it, but um, the, the core idea is that a single uh, cell, right, in a, in a database row can, can reference another row on another table. Right, so this is a belongs to relationship, right? I've got an ID that points to another object in the system. And somebody looking at that object and having that object's ID can work out that I'm related to it because I have, I'm one of the objects that has a reference back to that original object. So it sounds like probably a complex way I just said it. It's really not that bad. Um, again, the core idea is that I've got an ID and it's, it's, a, it's a pointer, right? Or an arrow that sort of like points back to another object, right? Uh, the interesting thing is that all of the complicated relationships that you can build with relational algebra fall out of this, fall out of this one really simple idea that a cell in a database can point to another, another row, right? Um, so if, if you sort of think about it, right? Uh, belongs to means that I've got an ID of another model that's, that, that owns me, right, to, that, that has one of me, or one or many, right? Um, so you can work out uh, which things belong to me, right, just by figuring out, like querying for all the IDs that match my ID. Um, the interesting thing is, like, we're actually able to use classical inheritance to model these, because really, all of the more complex relationships, many to many, uh, even like self-referential, ends up being just these sort of behaviors, right? Just different arrows pointing at different tables, right? I, I, I know that probably sounds too good to be true, but it really, it really is the case. Um, so, sort of the, the, the core of these associations, right? Um, for it belongs to, they're, they're really just, again, just defining a handful of methods on the object and creating this, this thing where it can point back to something else. And using that as the, as the, the, the basic relational uh, kind of primitive, right? We can, we can construct all these other relationships based on it. Um, so in, in, in fact, this is probably the most intense section of the code is the, the stuff that deals with the, the many to many, a has and belongs to many relationship. So, in a conventional like SQL context, right, we would actually have a, a literal join model, right, that says, okay, these are the things that, or that manages the many to many, right? So there's a model that has a, that points back to both models, right? And you can work out, okay, which which things, on the, on the other hand, belong to me, and, and vice versa, right? Um, so the, the, the trick here, kind of, is that it's really, it's really, a many-to-many -many is really two belongs to through relations, right? Um, so the, the trick is you just need the through model, the join model, right? Um, since we don't have a database context, what we actually do is we, Eval we write out a literal join model for you and just eval it and then set up the as many throughs for you. Um, and so it all just kind of ends up, and again, so saying has and belongs to many in this context ends up actually 
writing out a join model in the middle for you that will help manage your, your relationship. Um, so again, kind of the core idea is you can, you can play around with kind of effectively the full extent, right, of uh, kind of relational algebraic patterns, right, with these objects. And it's, you know, I, I think it might be especially interesting if you're kind of like learning or designing a system and trying to reason about, okay, how should, these, how should this data flow together? Um, but I, I also suspect it might be interesting in a, in a, in a context where you're trying to um, uh, try, trying to do work without wanting a database in the loop. Um, so I, I get that that's probably most people's context that so they've got a database in the loop, but I, I, I think it's at least plausible these days that you might be working in a context where either persistence isn't a critical factor, um, or, or you're getting all the information you need some other way that doesn't demand persistence, right? Like you're consuming an event stream and using that to hydrate or populate your models and then answering questions about the events you've received, right? Um, so for, for instance, you can see here that the, the has many through models or the has many through relationships um, sort of expose some of the arithmetic helpers. You can sort of do, do queries on top of them. Um, you can, in, you know, insert new children into the relationship, right? Like, it, 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 again, it, it should play for the most part like, like active record. Um, and again, if you just say like parent.children, you'll actually get this explicit relation object um, that, that, again, you can query on or ask, ask uh, Boolean predicates and things like that. Um, so yeah, we can talk a little bit, I guess, about prior art, right? Um, so back in like ancient Rails history, right? There's a, a something called tableless model, which is an approach that kind of Ryan Bates talks about it in a few places, right? Um, I think the example he gave on one of the Rails casts is about, okay, you want to send an email, um, but you don't, I think, necessarily you know, need or want a record in a database associated with it, but um, I think it's sort of like a, like maybe a guest book sort of thing, like you're signing something and then you just want to deliver an email, you don't really care about storing it. Um, and so basically the approach there is just to um, make a new active record object and then start overriding methods until active record gives up trying to persist it. And it's like fine, you know, you're, you're, you don't want to persist this thing. Um, and that, kind of works, right? Um, but today we have something called active model, which um, I, my, my sense roughly is that it was extracted from active record at some point, but, but the, 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 the core of it is it gives, you know, basic Ruby objects sort of some of the like life cycle validations and hooks and, and some like attribute management facilities. Um, but it's interesting with the old table is model because you're just using an active record object and poking holes in it till it doesn't persist anymore. Um, they could actually interoperate with other active record models, right? In a way that that active model, as far as I understand, really can't do. Um, I could be wrong about that, but uh, let's see. Like, yeah, pa passive record in particular is not going to try to interop smoothly with active record. That's really not a design goal here. It's really for again systems that don't have a need for persistence, or you, again, you can sort of get the data you need some other way. Um, yeah, so uh, we were featured on uh, the Ruby 5 podcast a couple weeks ago, and so got, uh, started to get a healthy number of stars. Um, it is a, a deep cerulean slash passive record if you want to check out the code. Um, Maybe one place to dive in if you're sort of curious about how all this works. Uh, Spec Helper has kind of all the all the models that we're using to test, um, and kind of a lot of these are are straight out of kind of Rails' own examples of how, how it sort of thinks and reasons about Active Record. Um, and so these are these are kind of the subjects of the the, the tests over over the passive record behaviors. Um, Sort of giving again. I think this is the literal example from the Rails docs about like how to do a many to many, or I guess this is a self-referential because in this case a user has many friends that are also users, right? Um, sort of doing some of the more 
like you know integrating with hooks, sort of showing how uh, you could you could formulate the scopes. Um, I mean, again, the idea is that like it it kind of feels like an active record model without necessarily having that the the weight of active record behind it. And um, and again, depending on your context, you may not want to do a full database round trip just to ask a, a question about a model when you potentially have all the information, right? Um, so maybe I should talk about limitations, right? So uh, obviously it's in memory. So if your data set doesn't fit into memory, this probably won't work for you. Um, so again, the places where I see it being probably the most interesting are in sort of object design phase when you're trying to work out, okay, what are the entities in my system? How, how ought they be related? And how do I want to interact with them and interface with them? Um, and again, maybe also in this context where perhaps you've got a, a service, right, that that's, can hydrate its models either from an API or from a stream of events or something, and the questions the service is being asked are relational in nature about the data it's working with. Um, so, you guys can't probably see that at all. But I wanted to at least show off one thing that I've, I've built on top of this. And it may be in a rough, kind of rough state. But um, so this is a video game. <laughs> uh, and you can kind of mine, you can kind of get rid of this. So. The idea is that we've got, this is kind of an isomorphic Ruby application, so we've got the same code base powering a Ruby server in the cloud, and it's sort of got these internal models that are passive record objects. It's got a, a model for the map and for the, the location of the person, and the, the, the client is receiving a stream of events from the server when those models change, and then using that to hydrate its view, and when uh, the user interacts with the view, it's sending commands back up to the server that, that interact with the models. Um, so it's kind of neat, right? One Ruby code base powering a server and this visual GUI client. Um, and a, a, again, no, no need for persistence because there's really not any urgent requirement <laughs> that all this data goes into a database somewhere, right? Um, it, it, it's maybe a, a little strange because we are sort of using Redis as the, as the message queue to get things across. So like technically there's a database in the loop, but it's not to persist the models, right? It's really just to facilitate communication between the client and the server, we're sort of using it just as message queue. Um, so there is kind of database in view, but it's not, we're not using it to persist or store models, right? Um, all the models are, again, lightweight in memory things that will be destroyed if you, the server restarts, right? But in this case, it's a game, so who cares, right? <laughs> um, if at some point it becomes urgent that this is like persisted or something, at that point, maybe you, can, you could adapt the, the subset of models you care about and start persisting them. Um, well, I mean, one idea there is that because the interface is so close, right, it shouldn't be that hard to translate them. Um, so just uh, a, a few things. Um, yeah, so that's, that's kind of the big picture. Um, it's kind of like 745. Are there, uh, yeah, I guess that's kind of it. Um, are there any, like, questions or, like, thoughts or responses? Yeah. I don't know if everyone can hear me, but... One place I'd really like to use this would be in my tests, since they're always like hammering the database and it's kind of a bottleneck. So it'd be super nice to really just have objects that would be like not really bad. Um, is there any way, I mean, it looks like it's a totally different library, so it'd be pretty hard to actually translate my active record code into passive record code, but is there any way I could do that easily? Or is there any thought about that at all? Yeah. I, 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 yeah, yeah, okay, so uh, Patrick is asking about could you use this in test because these obviously don't do a round trip of the database which is, which is slow and, and potentially your tests are doing a lot of very intensive kind of relational stuff. Um, and I, I, conceptually, yes, right? There's like, there's nothing that would stop you from saying, okay, use these fake lightweight in-memory models and test. The issue is now maybe you got two problems, <laughs> right? Um, I mean, namely that you've now got two sets of models and they have to be kept in sync. And if they start diverging, your tests aren't telling you the truth about the world. And it kind of maybe undercuts the, the yeah, right? Like, yeah, it, it, the guarantees your tests are trying to give you, which is that it's like my prod code works versus, I mean, it's not, at some point you're now 
you're, you're uh, uh, look, uh, for very small, simple cases, maybe it's fine when, and you can like visually uh, assert that it's like, yeah, the relations between the passive models are the same, but it's like as soon as you start getting, adding complexity, any kind of real world Rails app is gonna have a model that's like very intense, or at least potentially, is gonna have a set of models that are complex and sort of do things that are possibly beyond the scope of what passive record's contemplating. Again, it's really kind of like relations, queries, and hooks, right? So if you're doing kind of any deeper stuff, it, it's, it's not gonna be a drop-in replacement for the behavior. Um, but as far as the, the relationality goes, m maybe, it might be worth experimenting with, but I, I really, I would, not, I would not recommend it as a drop-in replacement for your, for your using your actual database models and test. But it's it's a good question. Like, yeah, it's 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 something I kind of wonder about too, right? Um, it does it does feel awful heavy to use. But but I mean, I, I guess that's the the point is that you actually want to know that the the test scenarios your 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 specs are are working through actually reflect something similar to what the production code is going to be doing. I don't know. That's kind of where my my thoughts are at. Anything? Yeah. the idea that kind of the core of your app is these models that don't know about the database. It's just kind of conceptual. And then any database or persistence connection is kind of isolated. So do, do you think that this would be, uh, like one thing I've, I, one reason I've hesitated to do domain model like that is the idea of, that it feels like I have to build a lot in there to connect things with the relationships. Do you think that passive record would be helpful for that kind of domain model approach? Yeah, yeah. No, I mean, that's what I use it for, right? If that makes sense, right? It's, or it's sort of like, at the early stages of a project, it can be heavy to try to build out a bunch of complicated schema, and sometimes you don't even really know how you want that, that to work. Um, sorry, can you say the question again just so I can repeat it? Could this be useful for a like, core domain model for your app that doesn't have any database connection, and then just putting database connectivity, isolating that as kind of edge, edge code? Yeah. So it would still be persistent, it just wouldn't be tied up into your model itself. Okay, so, so the question was, can you use could you, would it be advisable, I guess, to use passive record to model the core of a domain and then start using active models at the edges of the domain where you actually need to persist things? Um, I mean, I think the short, short answer is yes. That's, that's kind of the, the idea of it, is not necessarily to, to, to replace or displace your, your database inter, interface and interaction. Um, but, but more to provide a facility that doesn't require a database to do relational semantics with objects, right? With, with as low overhead as possible, lightweight and in memory and, and so on. Um, so yeah, yeah. Um, I have a question. What are you using in the back end to store the, like, the actual data, the attributes in memory? I mean, so like, if I instantiate a parent, and then, uh, so I guess if I look up that parent, how, like, where are you looking up that idea on and how did you model that? Yeah. Did you run it actually, did you run into any issues doing searches too? That would be interesting to know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, okay, so the question is kind of like how these are stored in memory? Am I, is that like kind of it? Okay, um, it's a big hash is the, <laughs> is the, the short answer. Um, like index by ID so that the ID lookup is fast, right? And all the lookups are by ID anyway. So again, lightweight in memory uh, is, is kind of the, the theme here, right? Like there's there's not, some big, deep, complicated structure, and if you do start putting a bunch of data, it, will, it probably will start getting slow, if that's the question underneath it, too. Um, oh, okay, so, you, so you're not just asking about like how these are stored, but like how the queries work. Um, okay, that's a, that's a cool question, so. Uh, yeah, this is, this is the core of the query, right? So we're trying to find matching instances. We're gonna iterate through all the conditions and attempt to evaluate them. Um, yeah, and so this is actually the behavior where we detect, okay, if you pass this in a hash as a condition, it's nested. If you pass this in a range, we, we try to behave like a SQL in operation, uh, or SQL between, and with a, an array, it's like a SQL in. 
and then otherwise we're just directly comparing with an equals do these, do these fields match, right? So hopefully these, this demystifies it a little bit. There's really like sort of not a, a whole lot of magic under the hood, if that makes sense. But anything else, guys? Yeah. It's like the e memory, uh, e memory cache. So in that vein, uh, the impression on this that you thought about the e memory almost like time to live. So we can actually treat that like the e cache with relational functionality. Oh, wow. That's fascinating. No, I hadn't even contemplated it. Sorry, I mean, maybe one can say, okay, so the question was. Have you, have you contemplated inserting something like a time to live for models so that you could treat it like a cache? Um, and the answer is no. And the, uh, the, <laughs> I think the, the, the real issue there is, is you would need some constantly running process to, to clean it out and to ap apply the TTL rules. Um, at least as far as I'm like envisioning it, I'm not, I'm not sure another, I mean, pr I guess you could, um, Right, and I guess you could do it like on each query so that, you know, but like I, I, I kind of wonder about that, right? Um, no, but it sounds interesting. That, that's actually super fascinating um, and, and potentially maybe a way uh, this could be useful to more people. So I will, I, will, I will think about that for sure. Thank you. All right, anything else? All right, thank you guys so much for giving me some time to talk about this. Thank you. Thank you. This video has been sponsored by Rietta Incorporated. Learn more today at rietta.com.